Well, hello everyone. So this is the summer solstice reading for those in the Sacred Partnerships course. And if you have found this video, then there may be a message in here for you. But do keep in mind, these messages are specific to the group of women in the course and more of that is in the details below. So diving right into the reading, because the upcoming circle is more about clearing those old contracts and vows and promises that's no longer serving you and blocking your relationship or blocking that compatible life partner from coming into your life. So first of all, I want to thank all the students in the course for sending me the songs, movies, books, even your favorite paintings because Spirit and the Creator wanted to collect as many as possible and they wanted me to go and really drill into the plot lines of the movies, the books, and even go through lyrics within the songs. And by the way, the songs that were submitted, there were over 130 of them. And yes, I went through thousands of lines within the lyrics to find any sort of negative beliefs within them because we do tend to absorb beliefs, both positive and negative beliefs about love simply by listening to songs. It could go into us consciously as we are fiercely listening and believing <laughs> every single line within the song. And it could also go into us unconsciously. And that, that one could be very troublesome and create a lot of blocks in your life. So I will explain in the online course how that happens. And we will release any that is no longer serving the group at this time. So I really spent quite a few days <laughs> going through all those forms of art. Because they are art, aren't they? Movies, books, um, even songs. So... There was a common theme within those um, art, artworks, and that was waiting. So when we are in a state of waiting for love or waiting for the right person to show up, or if we feel like we're forever waiting for that right soulmate or the compatible soulmate to show up, that means there's a block there somewhere you have decided to adopt this belief that you will forever wait for your soulmate to show up or you'll forever wait for your compatible life partner to show up in your life. And we really need to drill into the stories and that's what the tarot cards are all about. So those of you who are in the class, you're welcome to look at the picture of the cards that I have emailed to the group. But when we have this belief, I will wait for that right person to show up or I will wait for my soulmate to show up. The word wait gets programmed into your soul and into your subconscious. So you are always feeling obligated to be in that state of waiting. And when you're in that state of waiting, you may completely miss that soulmate because <laughs> deep down your soul or your subconscious fiercely believes I must wait for that person to show up and by doing so it might blind you from actually seeing and welcoming that compatible soulmate into your life so there are some storylines that we're going to get into that is a common theme within the group so by the way um, we will be releasing in the healing meditation in the upcoming circle any beliefs about needing to wait and we need to replace it with a more of a positive belief system so those I will talk about in the circle and for those of you who want to hop in on this course you can listen to the recorded um, or the replay of that circle so getting into the trauma stories here, which are in the tarot cards. So you're welcome to have it displayed on your screen or printed out so you understand the common stories within the group that has created this state of waiting. So 
and as uh, spirit keeps saying, wow, these cards are quite scandalous. <laughs> so we're going to have a good laugh. So let's get right into it. I won't keep you uh, on your toes. So these two cards want to talk first, and they're the black and white ones in the picture. Leaving you hurt me too. I understand you better now. So there's this trauma here where someone has left you and that created that state of waiting within you. When someone leaves us, uh, sometimes we have this hope, oh, maybe they'll come back. <laughs> maybe I'll wait around for them. Maybe maybe they'll, you know, get their stuff together and then and then they'll come back. So I'll wait. So there's a little bit of that storyline that is lingering from past lives. And I was suspecting a lot of past life promises or vows or contracts to wait. Um, and that was confirmed because the last card talks about past lives. So we'll get to that towards the end. But when that person left you in that past reincarnation, there's a part of them that regretted it because now they realized in that lifetime, they realized that they understood you better once they left you. So there's sometimes there's this belief there of maybe I need to depart a relationship or depart from a group of people or depart from this friendship to see what's really on the other side so I could learn. And sometimes soul souls do need to do that but sometimes souls have this fierce contract to need to continue leaving so that they know what they missed out and that could happen sometimes it's very very rare we create very strange soul contracts and belief systems <laughs> i've seen very interesting ones in my uh, couples uh, healing sessions which are about three hours long so I've seen really interesting ones, so I'm not surprised that, that these cards have come out talking about these very polarizing and contradicting feelings. So leaving you hurt me, but I understood you better because I did that. So we'll heal things around there. It's so important to close any lessons there because when we close the lessons there in our Akashic Records, then it's possible that we can also close that karmic loop, that same thing from happening over and over again. But keep in mind that this healing is for the group. So to go a little deeper, that's more specific to you, you may need a private one-on-one -on -one session with me. And I will be opening up more private one-on-one -on -one sessions in the summer. So do keep an eye on my social media or sign up for my email newsletter. So going on to the next set <laughs> of scandalous um, cards. I, I love your spirit, guys. They just want to be so dramatic. Oh, my goodness. So the next two cards say, I watch your social media. I feel so happy with you. So there's this sense of happiness, distance, distant happiness I'm hearing from spirit say by just watching your social media and that kind of gives them a sense of safety and also a sense of assurance that you are okay in some ways but here's the problem when we break up with someone or we part ways with someone and the other person is still stalking our social media our Facebook photos etc Every time that that person does that, they're actually linking in, cording in with your energy. And that could really muck things up for you. So when people do that and you feel them cording into you energetically, it could make you have a bit of a brain fog, make you feel unable to think clearly and fully feel your emotions. In a particular, I know there's a lot of high empaths, highly sensitive and high, highly psychic people in this, uh, in our group. So you might really, really feel it. So we'll also have to release those cords, hooks, do an energetic divorce. Um, even though if you were not married to them, an energetic divorce is good to do because it's a really good clearing. Um, and it's safe to do that, um, even if you're partnered with someone. 
So we'll do a good um, a decluttering, I'm hearing uh, the creator say. So we'll release all those cords, hooks that were created after um, the end of a relationship, either in this lifetime or in others. So going on to scandalous story number three. <laughs> so this is where your soulmate from this life or past lives is actually re expressing a lot of regret. And sometimes that deep regret could also create a cord within you because they're thinking about you. They're thinking what they have done to you. So these two cards say, I know that I crossed the line with you and I wish I had treated you better. So we'll have to release a lot of the... <coughs> Oh, excuse me. I was about to say we have to release a lot of the heartache because I can really feel it in the lungs. And um, in the lungs, we do store a lot of grief, sorrow, disappointment, and hurt and pain. And it makes us unable to breathe because whatever trauma that may, that may have happened to you in that past life or in this lifetime, or even within your ancestors, it really knocked you off your feet that you couldn't breathe so sometimes that level of shock and pain could prevent us from taking in the deep breaths and I can really feel the tightness in the lungs so we'll have to release a lot of that clogged energy I keep seeing um, a kitchen sink that just is clogged and won't drain <laughs> so we'll release a lot of that energy there from everyone in the group so those are the stories. We'll get more into detail in the circle because when we all gather, our collective energy just gives me more of a, a clear image of what needs to be done. But this is really just the general story and I'll go way more into detail of how this entanglement and complex vows, contracts and Cords could really create a mess and also create blocks in our relationship. So what are you learning at this time? So there are three cards that had come out. The first thing that you are learning is stand still. So you're learning at this time, this pause, the need for reflection. So ask yourself where on your life, in your life you feel that you are still waiting. And do that reflective work quietly and individually on your own because then I can tune in to that energy of reflection within everyone in the group and channel things that are specific to release for you and also for others. So right now you might feel that Things are a bit of a standstill or your healing may have plateaued a bit and when our healing or psychic development plateaus a bit it means it's a time of integration rest reflection it also means you may be too physically exhausted that it's better not to continue this healing work it's it's good to just take a step back so that's why I have all the healing journeys and the meditations recorded so you can listen to it when you feel ready for the next one and in particular I do want everyone to be ready for this healing meditation coming up this weekend because this is really deep deep stuff and you might start to already feel all the things that need to be released from your solar plexus and from your heart chakra because I could really feel it in the group also from the root chakra because something got sh uh, shaken up there in terms of foundation feeling safe and supported so we'll look into all that and I'll see what the creator has in mind in terms of healing and cancelling and releasing anything in your Akashic records. So as you're in the state of standstill, reflecting, resting, and perhaps planning <laughs> for the future, consider what makes you happy. And happiness is the next card that had to come out. So ask yourself, what is it that truly made you happy in the past? And then ask yourself another question on top of that. 
Was it because I was at an unhealed state, so that made me happy? But now that I'm healed and I'm a little bit more aware, more spiritually evolved, is what made me happy before still makes me happy. So continue to ask yourself that your preferences, is that still the same? Things that you like to do, does that still resonate with you? What needs to change? Because I'm hearing the word leveling up and becoming more of yourself that's coming, in particular in July and August for a lot of you. So keep that in mind. The last card that had come out is Healing Chaos. And that is what we're doing. <laughs> That's what we're going to do in this weekend's circle. We're going to look into releasing all that entangled mess of old contracts and vows, promises, and cords and hooks that were created. So that's what we're going to do. We won't be able to release everything in that one circle, like I mentioned, because there are a lot of things that are specific to each and every one of you. So we'll try to get in as deep as possible. So the final card is from the goddess Isis. And this is where she talks about past life. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this reading, there's a lot of that past life trauma and beliefs and contracts there that's still creating these blocks within relationships within this lifetime. So Isis asks or says, this situation involves your past life memories. So I know there's a lot, or actually all of you are highly intuitive and very connected to yourself and spirit. So begin thinking of or meditating sorry correction from spirit they're saying begin meditating on what your past life events may have been that's creating the situation that's frustrating or that's keeping you in that state of waiting right now so do that meditation it doesn't have to be 20 minutes it could be you simply sitting very still for five minutes and asking your spirit guides to show you what is it that happened in your past life what was the root or the origin of that event and how is that still creating various blocks in your life so it could be just relationships to others or to your significant other but how about relationship to yourself because remember when one traumatic event happens it does influence the way we navigate through all aspects of our life even relationships or relationship with ourself so do that suggestion from spirit if you feel guided to do so just sitting quietly and saying show me where did it all start what was the beginning of all this and then show me the rest of the story through all my other past lives and how it's all playing out in this life so that's quite the homework. <laughs> so I will leave you with that. And I look forward to guiding you all in our next healing journey.